This is the second part of the Kalex 300R engine teardown. At the end of this video, this engine will be completely torn down, including the bearings in the case. Here I'm taking off a small side cover which has the shift selector protruding out of it. Those are some beautiful bolt busting noises. Cam journals look good. And so do the cams. Here I'm taking out the four high torque bolts for the cylinder head. After I took those four bolts out, I fiddled with the head for a while because I forgot there were smaller bolts down in this in the timing chain galley. So if you're doing this, don't forget those. Here's the first look at the piston, and now the cylinder block comes off. Cylinder board looks pretty good. I'm getting back to that bolt that was stripped in the last video. I just took a Dremel to it and cut a slot in it so that I could hopefully get it out with a screwdriver or a chisel.
it took a whole lot longer than what what you saw there that was multiple days of toying with that little bolt and the oil pump comes off This collar is clearly well used. It will be satisfying to replace that. And it's time to bust the cases. Again, it's really nice to see how clean the engine is on the inside. It's kind of difficult to get the transmission out. You just have to kind of wiggle around and get the shafts out one by one. Most of the bearings on this case were quite crunchy. And here's the other case. It's time to take the crankshaft out after we get the bearing for the shift drum removed. As well as gear for the shift drum, which will come out the other side. And there's the gear for the shift drum. It was in pretty good condition. So the method I used to get the bearings out is probably the easiest method where you just heat the engine cases up to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit or, or a little bit more if you can. But the method, the, the theory is that when you, since the bearings are steel and the case is aluminum, the aluminum expands more than the steel. So it's a lot easier to just hammer them out once the aluminum is really hot. And as you can see, it's, it, it works well. You can do the same thing to get, the, to get install the new bearings, except it's even better to put the bearings in the freezer also, and they'll literally slide right in. Don't worry, the crankshaft fell on the wood. You can see this remaining bearing in this engine case. I didn't get any good footage of my removal of it. I probably chose the worst method to remove it. I used a Dremel because I didn't realize that there is a certain type of bearing puller for that bearing. The problem is there's no area on the other side of the engine case, there's no hole to beat it out from that side. So I chose the most painstaking method of cutting the bearing races out and then removing the bearing that way. It took way too long. You can get a bearing puller for this type of bearing. Uh, it, the end of it is thin enough to seat in between the case and the other side of the bearing race. So do that. Don't do what I did and use a Dremel to cut the races apart.
crunchy bearing. This is the shifter mechanism for the lever. Let's fling that across the room. So you can see some wear on the wrist pin there. And there's also wear inside the connecting rod, which is not ideal. Uh, it's definitely something I'm gonna have to replace, which is a pain for these crankshafts. These are, they're, they're a two-piece design, so both of the lobes in the crankshaft are separate. And then there's a, a shaft that they press into both sides of the crankshaft with the connecting rod on it, with a bearing inside. So you have to pry the crankshaft apart to get that shaft out to remove the connecting rod. And it's, it's a whole process. I don't have the machinery. I don't. If even if I had a hydraulic press, I don't think I could do it. You really need a special machine to do that. And you, when you reinstall the new shaft, you have to get the alignment of both lobes horizontally or like parallel to each other, absolutely perfect. Or else you'll have some really weird issues with kicking the engine over when you rebuild it. So that is the end of the KLX 300R engine disassembly video. That project is actually going to get put on the back burner for a little while, mainly because I, I still have to spend a bunch of money on that thing. And if I did that, it would probably take another month or two. And by the time I got it done, I wouldn't be able to ride because it'd be too cold. So I'm going to wait till the winter to pick that project back up. And then by the time I'm done, it will probably start warming up and uh, be warm enough for me to actually start riding again. So right now, next video will be on this go right here. This is my daily driver, 2014 370Z, uh, six-speed manual touring package. Uh, about a week ago, my clutch slate cylinder went out, and then my clutch got destroyed because of it. So I took old six-speed out, and we're going to be doing some upgrades. Uh, this is a Jim Wolf Technology light, lightweight flywheel and a pressure plate and a clutch, also from Jim Wolf. So the next video will be on installing that, the Z-Speed uh, C-Mac kit uh, for the transmission so that if the slave cylinder goes out again, I don't have to worry about dropping the whole transmission because that kit moves the slave cylinder to the outside of the transmission. Um, so that's the next video that will be coming out. In the meantime, between now and the winter when I start picking up the drawback project again, I'll also be doing some other videos on the daily driver I have some coilovers on the way they're being built right now and some wheels I might also do exhaust and a fixed bucket seat or a chassis mounted shifter we'll see but there will be still content uh, and projects so that's the end of this video uh, I hope you enjoyed it thank you for watching and I also hope you look forward to uh, some work on the old Z stay tuned until next time